In this video, I'm gonna share my new web design workflow that'll help you design your websites, make them look professional. It'll also make your design process even faster and more consistent. So in this tutorial, I'll be using Divi. So the idea here is to create one single page which will have all your settings that will span across your whole website. So these are also called global defaults. Now, before we get started, if you buy Divi using my affiliate link, I will give you access to my Divi Blueprint course, which teaches you everything that you need to know about designing professional looking websites. All right, let's dive in and let me show you how I create this new workflow. So over here, I'm in my WordPress admin dashboard. Let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm gonna come over here, click on add new. So we can call this page whatever we want, but I think uh, the name that really works better here is a name that reminds you of what this page is. So I could just call this a global template. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on use Divi Builder, and then I'm gonna come over here and click on build from scratch. Every element I'm going to add on this website is going to be a global element. So wh what happens is every time I introduce one of those elements, it will have the same setting as I'm designing my website. So that's the whole idea. So let's start here with our sections. So what I wanna do here is, in fact, if I add a single column here like that, now this space on the top here is not uh, ideal when I design websites. So ideally what I'd like to do is to increase my padding, but I want to add it as a global. So I'm gonna come over here to section settings, and then I'm gonna click on this button here. So this is for our global settings. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to design, spacing, and then on the top here, I'm going to give my padding of uh, 120, and then on the bottom, I'm gonna give this 80. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do for uh, all my sections. I'm gonna save this, and then I'm gonna save it as a global item. So that's my first setting. So notice, when I add a new section here, it's going to have that same height. Now let me show you, because right now on the top here we have 120 pixels, and then if I mouse over here, we also have 120. Right, so let's start creating all the rest of the elements that we need for our website. So our website here is going to need a text module, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is just going to be our basic paragraph text. So as you can see, we have some text here, so I need to choose a specific font, so I'm gonna come over here to, in fact, I'm gonna click on this uh, global icon, so that I can start adding my global settings. So I'm gonna come over here to design. So this font that we have here, I might not be uh, keen on that, so I'm gonna click here on text, default font. So the font I'm gonna use here is called Lato. So that's what I wanna use for my website. And then I'm gonna change my font weight to regular. And then what I could also do here is to add some letter spacing. So I'll just add one for my letter spacing. And for my text size, I'm just gonna increase this to about, um, 17, and my line height, I'm gonna increase it a little bit to, in fact, 1.7 seems okay. So this is going to be my normal text on my website. So I'm gonna go ahead and save, and then I'm gonna save one more time. Next, why don't we add our headings? So let's start with, uh, in fact, let me add a new text module here. Right, so I'm gonna add my headings now. So I'm gonna start with heading one, and I'm gonna add heading two and heading three. So normally I don't go as far as heading four, to be honest, so I'm just gonna to stick to heading one, heading two, and heading three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this and then come over here, set this to heading one, highlight the next one, set it to heading two, highlight the third one, and set it to heading three. Now, all this will make sense in a moment because right now it looks like I'm just uh, going in and making all these random changes. Okay, so I'm gonna click here on my global settings. So now I'm gonna style all my headings. So I'm gonna come to my heading text. I'm gonna start with heading one. So my font is going to be Lato, all caps. And I think the size 32 is okay, the way it is. And maybe change this from regular to bold so we can see a proper difference. Next, I'm gonna to go to heading two, and then I'm gonna do the same, change this to Lato, and then I'm gonna make it bold as well. But as you see, the difference between these two is the size. So this is 26, we might make it a bit smaller as well, maybe to about 20, let's make it 24. All right, now let's move on to heading three. So I'm gonna come over here, choose the heading three tag, tab, 
change my font to Lato, and then change this from regular to bold, all caps. Now for, for this one here, again, we're gonna reduce the size to about 19. Okay, so that's looking great, I'm gonna save. Now, of course, this looks like uh, it's, <laughs> uh, I'm not really doing much here because we don't get to see the actual design that we're working on, but you will see in a moment why this is very, very important to design your websites this way. Okay, so I'm gonna save this. Uh, the next element I'm gonna add is going to be an image. So I'm gonna click on this plus button here, and then I'm going to search for my image module. Right. So what I'm gonna do with my images here is, first of all, I'm gonna click on this gear icon to go into the global. And then I'm gonna click on design, filters. So this is where we want to make our change. We can make this a slightly a sepia tone, or we can even add a hue to our, our image here, okay? So I know right now we can't really see the hue. Uh, ideally, it'd be nice if we had an image here that we could, that we could bring in. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna come over here back to my module settings and then let's add an image. All right, let's go with this lady here. Upload an image. So as you can see, that hue that I added has come into, into my design, but of course this doesn't look really nice. So let's go back and make those changes. So I'm gonna click here on my global icon, design, filters. Now, I wanna show you something quickly here because uh, this could be something that you may fall into as you're designing your site. You can actually come over here and click these little three dots and reset filter to default. So as you can see on my global item, I've reset this and it's now gone to my default. Okay, so let's add a sepia tone to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add about 42% on my sepia here. And the brightness, I'm just gonna reduce this a little bit to about maybe 80. I'm going to increase a bit of contrast here to about maybe 120%. Okay, so I think I'm, I'm okay now with my global defaults here. I'm gonna save this and say yes. So let's move on and let's work on something else. So I'm gonna save changes. Now let's add a, a setting on our rows. So I'm gonna come over here to my rows. Now with my rows, I prefer to have them at about 80%. So I'm gonna come over here to my row settings, click on the global item, design, sizing, and I'm gonna set my width here to 80%, okay, and then save. I'm gonna save changes. So pretty much this is what I have so far for my defaults, but as you can see, you can actually go in and add the rest of your modules. So let's say you want to add more modules here. We can actually go in and use the blurb because uh, the blurb is uh, something that we use all the time. So let's give this some global settings as well. So I'm gonna come over here, click on the global item, click on design. So here, let's start with our title text. So this is heading four. We're gonna come over here to our defaults, choose Lato, and we're gonna make it bold and all caps. Okay, so what uh, ideally what we'd like to do as well is to center all this text. So I'm gonna come over here to text, center everything, and then I'm gonna come to my body text. And just to keep the consistency, I'm gonna choose the font that I've been using, which is Lato. And I think I'm happy with the size that I have right here, okay? Now for the image, let's change this to, in fact, I can just leave the image as it is because just in case I may need to use images and icons and just flip between the two. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next as well is to add some padding to my design. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing and I'm gonna add about 20 and 20 to the bottom and left and right, top and bottom, okay? So this is so that next time, if I or if I decide to uh, add something here, uh, or color in the background, it will be easy for me to do that. All right, so I'm gonna save now. I think I've done enough. I'm gonna save one more time. So this page here has all our global settings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a brand new tab. That way we can always refer back to our global so you can see the change that's happening. So now that I've opened this in a new tab, let's add a brand new page. So I'm gonna come over here, add a new page. So let's call this the home page. okay? So I'm gonna click on use Divi Builder, build from scratch. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is to add an image and some text. So I'm gonna click here on a single column. And in this column, we're gonna add some text like that. Now notice that the settings that have come in here are straight from what we have in the global settings. 
And let me show you. So this is the text. So every time I'm designing my website now, I don't have to worry about coming in here and setting my text. And if I do need to do that, I can always come over here to my, to my global template and change all my settings right here. Okay, so now let's continue. So I can show you how easy it is to, to work on your site this way. Okay, so I have my text here. Now let's adjust the size. So I'm going to come over here to design. Now notice that whatever I'm going to do now is not going to mess up uh, all my global settings. So I'm going to reduce this to about, let's say, 75%. I'm going to center it. And then over here on my, uh, I'm going to center this as well. Okay, so that's looking great. Next, I'm going to add an image here in the background. So as I'm adding my image, notice what happens. So I'm going to click here on the third tab. And we're going to add an image. Okay, so you can see this image here has a sepia tone. And if I come over here to design, filters, we can see here that we have a sepia tone applied to the image. All right, so let's continue working on this uh, design. So I'm going to click here on uh, background. So what we could also do here is we could darken this, web, uh, this uh, image. Then over here, we're going to change our blend mode. To multiply and then back on this I'm just going to reduce this a little bit so that our text is easier to read so as I'm designing now the only changes I'm making is to my major elements but my text my headings they're all in place so let me show you again if I quickly add a heading to so this is going to be a text module I'm going to select that and let's just call this heading two I'm going to highlight the text select heading two and notice that now, this has taken the settings of heading two. So all I have to do now is to drag it into position and change my colors. So I'm going to come over here, heading text, change this to white so we can easily read it. And we can also align it. Drag this to the top. And we're going to do the same thing here with this text. I'm just going to change the color to white and save. Now, you may be, say, you may be thinking, well, why don't we just add the colors of the text in the uh, global uh, settings. So the problem with that is if you add your colors that way, you're still gonna change them anyways because as you're designing your websites, you're going to have instances where you want to have the text on a light background or you wanna have the text on a dark background. So the most important thing here is just to make sure that the size of the text is set and the type and the font is also set once and for all so as you're designing your website you won't need to do that now let me just add a few elements to this and then i can show you how easy it is as well to add the other elements that we've just created so if i come back over here i can see okay we've done the image we've done the heading we've done the paragraph text so let's take a look at some blurbs so again i'm going to click here on this plus button regular section now here i'm going to add some blurbs so i'm going to select it and you can see here by default, it already has my text in place. It has my, uh, it's all centered. It also has my title with the right settings. And this is what I have right here. Okay, so let's continue with this. So let's say now I don't want to have an image. Now I want to have an icon. So this is where I can just choose my icon. And let's say I go with that. Come over here to design, image and icon, change the color of that. Okay, so I'm going to reduce the size by activating use icon font size. And then I'm going to make the um, size smaller. Okay, great. So I'm going to save that. So let's say this is the, um, the setting I need. All I have to do now is to just uh, duplicate this. And the only thing I had to do here was just to change the image to an icon. But everything else is in place. So let me just add one more over here. If you recall, I added some padding around this. So the reason why I did that is, let's say you may want to add a background color here to your blurbs. You can always come into your gear icon, click on design. Um, in fact, let's go to the background. So I'm gonna content, come over here to background, and then we can give this a background color. So notice that it is set up already. It has uh, some breathing space because I've added some padding onto that. And I can also play around with my colors here. I can reduce this to maybe a very light gray. I want to or it can be a specific color but if we had to do this out of the box we would need to come in here and you know start fiddling with uh, all these settings so that of course you know makes this design process even longer and now I don't know if you've noticed this but if you take a look here at our design we also have our sections here at 120 uh, pixels at the top and 8 pixels on the bottom and 
Also, on our rows, as I add new rows, these are taking up the 80% that I set up originally over here. So, what you need to do moving forward is when you create your template, spend some time and uh, create every or most of the modules that you use for your design. Give them the right font, give them the right spacing, give them the right padding and margins. And then once you've done that, save that as a template. And every time you're going to be designing your website, it's going to conform to those defaults that you have set. Now, does that mean that we can't change these defaults? Absolutely not. Now, let me show you quickly how you can go back in in case you've changed your mind. So I'm going to come back here to our main to our main uh, defaults page. So I'm going to work on my paragraph text here. So let's say I want to change this text. I can click here on this global icon, design, text. So I'm going to change this from Leto and let's change this to Poppins. Okay, so next let's reduce our letter spacing here because for this font, it doesn't really work nice if it has one pixels. So this example here is could be in a scenario where let's say you're a freelance designer, you've designed the website for your client and they maybe decide to change their branding or they don't really like the font that you've used. So instead of going into every single page and make those changes, as you can see here, they're happening globally. So this will save you a lot of time. Okay, so I think my size here is okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and save. I'm also going to update this. So now when I come to my page here, where I have Leto as my normal text, if I refresh this, notice that now we have a new uh, font that has been applied throughout my site. Now we also need to do the same the, the same here for the blurbs as well, if you want to change the uh, paragraph text. Okay, so I'm gonna save this. Now there's also one element that uh, is normally used a lot, which I haven't added here. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add it while I'm actually designing my, um, my site. So let's say you're in the middle of uh, designing your site and you decide to add a button. I'm gonna click this plus button and then let's customize our button here. I'm gonna click here on this global icon, design button, and then I'm gonna activate use custom styles for button because this is where all my settings need to go. So let's start with the background color. Add maybe, okay, let's go with this. So background color, and then I'm also gonna change my font color, set it to white. My border width, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove that. Now let's say my border radius needs to be Zero, I can just go ahead and set it like that. Now my font, to be honest, I'm really happy with that, but if I wanted to change it, I could come over here and change it to whatever font I need. So I'm gonna set it to Poppins and then save. So now that my button is set, all you have to do is to come back over here to your global template and make sure you add that button onto this page because this page is going to serve as your template, which has all the settings of your website moving forward. So I know I've rushed this, but of course you want to take your time and make sure that you add all the major modules that you use, set all the sizes, the margins, the padding and so on, and then start building your website after that point. Any changes that you want to do, make sure you make your changes on the global template because this is the page that uh, has all the settings of your whole website. All right, so that's all I have for you. If you have any ideas of how creatively we can use th these global uh, default uh, editor, please let me know in the comments box below and I'm very happy to create even new videos. All right, that's all I have for you in today's video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.